ladies and gentlemen, members of the freedom movements that have sprung up around the world in response to undemocratic elections and unelected officials' reigns of terror. Our present time represents in no way the future we dreamed of when we were children. Have we been robbed? Or has sheer incompetence silently crept its way up into the political system to sabotage our dreams from within? Who are these people who have the power to make all of their subjects the objects of war, but who at the same time refuse to listen to a single one of our substantial objections? Our pleas for peace are dismissed as the ramblings of conspiracy theorists. Dare to oppose the war machine for whatever reason, regardless of what side you find yourself on, and you may also find yourself the target of judicial persecution for the crime of spreading disinformation. How, then, may we restore sanity and accountability to a world run by such cold, calculating, heartless people? Let us be clear about one thing. The men and women casually accepting the possibility of nuclear holocaust as a means to achieve an end are the real criminals. And they will not escape the tribunals where they will have to answer for their blatant disregard of human dignity. Looking back at just the past few years, who can deny the disintegration of formerly well-functioning societies? Our own. Who can list the loss of individual freedoms and of our collective rights without pausing to wonder if there is still something or someone greater out there watching over us? We've lost our right to question government policy. We've lost our right to disagree with what primetime media tells us to believe. We've lost our right to bodily integrity. We've lost our right to free and fair elections. In two of the most influential democracies in the world, one major election was lost in the mail. And another fair election was overturned by firing the prime minister after 44 days only to have her replaced with said election's loser. These are the methods of tyrannies and of shadow governments. And these people pulling the strings behind the scenes still call themselves democratic, but they'll call you fascist for pointing out the irony. To be called a conspiracy theorist at this point ought to be a badge of honor, for it is evidence that we have not yet lost our minds. Is it perhaps due to our historic tolerance that we have emboldened our quote-unquote leadership to put their disdain for the plebs on public display? Have we been silent for too long so that we are now being punished for speaking up? Honestly, I'm tired of asking all of these questions. I want answers. I want to know why the profits of a military industrial complex outweigh diplomatic solutions. And I want to know why a politicized medical industry puts revenue before people. And I think the answer to all such questions may be surprisingly identical. Namely, that the people ruling over us have lost touch with reality. Our leaders, though in name only, regard themselves almost a supernatural caste, one that believes it may herd us people around as though we were mice locked up in urban colonies. They are wrong. For our spirits have not been diluted, and our souls have not been crushed, 
our eyes are still seeing and we still have the acuity of mind to look ahead and see what's coming. We are wide awake. This is not the end. This is our beginning. They say that the West has fallen, but its people shall rise again. <laughs>